What's up guys, it's King Josh back with another video and today I'm going to show you guys three of the best lockdown defender builds in NBA 2K20. To start, we are going to go with shooting guard. For this first build, we're going to go with the lockdown and sharpshooter as the primary archetypes. And because you are a shooting guard, you're probably not going to be guarding big men. So we're going to go with the first pie chart for the physical profile. It'll give you a ton of speed and a ton of vertical. For the attributes, we're going to start with shooting. So you're going to want to max out your mid-range, max out your three-pointer, max out your post fade. And you could max out your free throw to get 18 shooting badges. But I want to make sure this build can have good passing accuracy and post moves just so I can post up other guards. So I'm going to lower the free throw until I get 16 shooting badges just so I can have four Hall of Fame shooting badges. So I'm going to have the free throw at an 81 instead of an 88 just so I can get a few more extra attribute points. Now going back up to finishing, you want to put your driving layup and driving dunk to about a 70. You could put it a little bit lower, you could max it out honestly. But like I said before, you want to save some attribute points for the playmaking because that part is actually really important for this build. You want to have your passing accuracy maybe around 65. You could max it out, but that's kind of a waste of attribute points since you don't really need playmaking badges. And then when it comes to ball handling, this is honestly up to you. So this build is kind of like a Klay Thompson build, a catch and shoot build that can clamp up on defense. But if you want pro dribble moves, you want to put your ball handle to 70 for sure. Maybe even a little bit higher if you want to max out the wingspan later on. But because I would use this build as an off-ball build, I would not touch the ball control at all. Now going on to the defense, you want to max out everything on defense if you want the most badges. But these four right here, perimeter defense, lateral quickness, steal, and block are the most important for this build, especially perimeter defense, lateral quickness, and steal. And when it comes to rebounding, you don't need it that much, but I would max it out just for the sake of the defensive badges. Also, I'm gonna max out the interior defense just so you don't get bodied as much by big men. And then I'm gonna lower down the offensive rebound a little bit to 72 instead of 75 so you get three extra attribute upgrades but still have 21 defense and rebounding badges. So we have 35 attribute upgrades left. I think the best thing to do with them is to spend them on post moves just so you can be effective in the post with that 80 post fade. But if you're not a post fade type player, you could lower this, put your ball control up, or if you don't wanna do either of those, you could take the attribute upgrades off your post moves and then i would suggest maxing out your driving layup and driving dunk and spending the rest maybe on your close shot just to get a couple finishing badges so it's all preference how you want to make the build but i would make it like this with 65 passing accuracy and post moves just so you're effective in the post and you don't throw really bad passes because 44 passing accuracy is horrible 65 isn't great but it's decent but you will be able to shoot lights out and clamp up on other guards so we're gonna finish with 16 shooting badges 21 defense and only one for finishing and playmaking once again this is kind of like a clay thompson build with not much finishing or playmaking because this is an off ball build you're gonna want to go six foot seven for the height if you do want to upgrade your ball control a little bit and be the primary guard on this build with 70 ball control you probably want to go six foot five or maybe even six foot four but that's only if you're upgrading your ball handling but if you don't do that then you don't need to be short the taller the better so i would go six foot seven and like i said before how this build is really just to clamp up guards and not so much big men you don't need much strength and therefore you want to minimize the weight all the way down to 180 but then you want to put it up by two just so you get one extra strength without losing any other attributes so 182 is the sweet spot and now going on to the wingspan once again this is preference you could put it all the way down to get an 81 3 but personally i would max it out get a 74 3 which doesn't sound all that good but with longer arms you can get steals in the passing lane much better your steal and block rating go way up and with shooting badges you'll be perfectly fine with a 74 three pointer for the takeover personally i would go with lockdown defender takeover you could go with the spot up shooter takeover but i think the lockdown defender takeover is much better especially this year now going on to the badges we're going to start with the shooting badges so since this is an off ball build you're definitely going to want catch and shoot hall of fame i would say put corner specialist it is a very good badge but most of your corner shots are going to be catch and shoot anyway so you don't really need corner specialist you probably want dead eye on this build you want hot zone hunter you might want range extender bronze just so if you get pulled behind the line you can actually make your shots you can put your quick draw to whatever you like it. I like quick draw on silver personally. That works the best with the jump shot that I have. But with these other three badges, you probably want Hot Zone Hunter, either gold or Hall of Fame. I would go Hall of Fame. It's an amazing badge. You want Dead Eye, maybe silver or gold. And then you want to spend the rest on green machine. So these are the badges that I would go with on this build. You might even want to put catch and shoot gold and green machine to Hall of Fame if you're really good at timing your jump shot. And also if you want, you could take range extender off and put dead eye to gold. Personally, I would just keep the badges how they are with range extender bronze. So now going on to the defense next, we have 21 badges. I think the best defensive badges for guards for sure clamps and intimidator Hall of Fame, interceptor Hall of Fame, pick dodger Hall of Fame, 
Pickpocket Hall of Fame. And for this last badge, I would probably go with Tireless Defender because Rim Protector Bronze, it would help. You could do this if you really want to, but it's not super useful. Same with Defensive Leader, it's a good badge, but I don't know how good it would be Bronze. So I would probably use the Bronze Badge on Tireless Defender. Now for the one playmaking badge, I would probably go with Postman Technician just so you can bully guards in the post a little bit more. Or you could go with Unpluckable or Quick First Step if you like to do jab steps out of the triple threat or if you really want you could go needle threader this badge helps to not get the ball stolen in passing lanes as much so i would either go with needle threader quick first step postman technician or unpluckable because this build will be playing off the ball you probably don't need unpluckable as much as the other ones so i would go postman technician or needle threader and last but not least for the finishing badge i would go with either contact finisher giant slayer or slithery finisher maybe even pro touch if you don't take contact layups just so you can make your full bar layups next we're gonna get into the two other lockdown defender builds so for these other two builds you are going to want to go small forward for this second build here you want to go all the way to the bottom we're going to go with a pure lockdown defender and the last lockdown defender build was just to guard guards not big men but this one will be able to guard both we are going to choose the bottom pie chart because you do get a lot of speed as well as 87 strength which is insane for a player that fast when it comes to the attributes we're going to max out the driving layup max out the driving dunk as you can see it's an 87 which means you can get contact dunks on a pure lockdown defender then when it comes to shooting you want to max out the mid-range to a 60 I wouldn't suggest touching the three because it only goes up to a 50 so I wouldn't touch that at all this build should just be able to shoot mid ranges just so people actually guard you from the mid range and don't sit in the paint and make it harder for you to get shots I wouldn't touch the free throw in the post fade the post fade only goes up to a 65 and the free throw is only good for pro-am and even then it only goes up to a 78 so I wouldn't touch those two when it comes to passing accuracy I would max that out ball handle I wouldn't touch that because you can't get it to 70 anyway plus you're not going to be dribbling much on this build at all and same with post moves your post moves only goes up to a 60 and even then you don't have a post hook or a post fade on this build so i wouldn't touch that for defense you want to put everything up right here you have an 81 interior defense and an 88 perimeter defense that's amazing as well as 83 lateral quickness your steal and block are both going to be really high and for the rebounding you want to max out your defensive rebound put your offensive rebound just up a little bit until you get that 30th defense and rebounding badge and the crazy thing about this build is it's pretty much complete right now and we still have 104 extra attributes so with those extra extra attributes I would max out your finishing just to get more finishing badges because once again this build can get contact dunks so I would max out your close shot max out your standing dunk put the rest of the points to your post hook and then lower your post hook just a little bit so you still have 15 finishing badges and then the four extra points you can spend on whatever you want if you plan to play pro-am on this build I would spend it on the free throw but if you just want to use this build for park I would definitely put it on the offensive rebound just so you can get boards over big men because stretch bigs do not have rebound this high as a 78 and a 95 you are going to be able to get rebounds over stretch bigs so you definitely want to upgrade that rebounding especially because this will be a taller build for the height we are going to want to go six foot eight you could go six foot nine if you plan to grind this build to 99 if you do want to make this build six foot nine you have to hit 96 overall for 84 driving dunk which is the lowest you need for contact dunks and then you need to hit 97 for the elite contact dunks so i'm going to go six foot eight just so you have contact dunks right off the bat and when it comes to the weight you want to put the weight all the way up as you can see you're going to get a 95 strength as well as a 91 interior defense so your interior defense is going to be even better than your perimeter defense at six foot eight and you can get contact dunks and your speed is a 79 which is insane when it comes to the wingspan for sure you're going to want to max it out you can't shoot anyway and it only drops your mid-range by two but then your block goes up to a 95 your steel goes up to an 88 for the takeover you definitely want to go lockdown defender glass cleaner takeover is not that useful for this build your rebounding is high but you're only six foot eight and as you can see we're compared to sean marion Giannis Antetokounmpo and Paul George so now we're going to test the build I'm going to show you guys the badges that you want to choose on this build for the finishing badges I would go contact finisher gold fancy footwork gold giant slayer gold slithery finisher gold and with the last three badges I would go back down punisher gold this will help you bodyguards a lot especially because you do have a 95 strength also, if you don't do hop steps much in the paint, I would take fancy footwork off and put pro touch to gold, but personally, I do a lot of hop steps. That's my play style, so I would go fancy footwork gold. Now for the one shooting badge, I would either go catch and shoot or quick draw bronze. Those are probably the best for this build. You might want to even go hot zone hunter if you can get hot zones from the mid range. That would be good. So I would either go with hot zone hunter bronze, quick draw bronze, or catch and shoot bronze. I would probably go quick draw bronze just so you can get your shot off much faster because if you don't have quick draw at all you're going to shoot the ball when you're open and by the time you release it you're going to be contested and this build definitely cannot hit contested shots so I would go quick draw bronze with that 
When it comes to the one playmaking badge, you probably want to go post spin technician. Once again, it'll help you bodyguards a lot better. So this is the one badge I would go with for playmaking. You could go with unpluckable so you don't get ripped as much in the post, but I think post spin technician is a little bit better. You could also go quick for a step if you want. This build is a little bit faster. So even though the ball control isn't high, your jab steps and your first step out of the triple threat will be quick with this badge. And now going on to defense, we have 30 badges. Once again, this build can guard big men and guards, so we're going to want to put Clamps Hall of Fame, Intimidator Hall of Fame, Interceptor Hall of Fame, Pick Dodger Hall of Fame, Pick Pocket Hall of Fame. So now we have 10 badges left, and this next part is honestly preference. You could put Rim Protector Hall of Fame, but I suggest putting Box Gold just so you can box out big men. And then with the last two badges, I would put Post Move Lockdown Hall of Fame so you can switch on to big men with no problem, and then you can put Worm Gold. And it's good that you have rebounding badges on gold because once again, if you do switch onto the bigs, you will be able to box out and you will be able to keep them boxed out with the box badge so they don't just push you out of the way and get the rebound. So now I'm going to show you guys one more build. Once again, this is a small forward build. And this build is very similar to the one we just made, but it's going to be a slasher lockdown. So once again, with this build, you're going to want to be able to guard big men. So you're going to want to go with the bottom pie chart right here where you have 87 strength to start off. You do want to max out your driving layup and driving dunk. As you can see, once again, you will be able to get contact dunks. Then you want to max out your mid-range again, just so you'll be able to shoot. So this player is more versatile. Then on to playmaking, you want to max out your passing accuracy. Ball handling, once again, don't touch it. It says 70 right now, but we're going to make this player taller and we're going to max the wingspan. So it's going to drop under 70, so I wouldn't touch that at all. Then when it comes to defense, we want to max everything out. As you can see, we're going to start with a 75 interior defense, which is going to go way up, and an 80 perimeter defense. So we do have 22 badges. We want to lower the offensive rebound just by one so we still have 22, and we can have that extra attribute point. And now we're going to get even more finishing badges. So you're going to want to max out your shot close, max out your standing dunk, spend the rest on post hook. Then you can drop your post hook a little bit so you still have 20 finishing badges. And with the extra five attribute points, you could spend it on free throw for Pro-Am, but I'm going to put the offensive rebound back up to one, and then with the four extra points, I'm going to upgrade post moves. It's not going to help that much, but I may as well put it here. Now for the height, we're going to go six foot nine. As you can see, 87 driving dunk. That's going to be crazy on a player this tall. And for the weight, once again, we are going to max it out. As you can see, we're going to have 95 strength again, 86 interior defense, and 74 perimeter defense. Now with the wingspan, we are going to max it out, and we're going to have a 76 steal and an 89 block. And the best thing about this build is it has slasher takeover so you can choose between lock and slasher i think lockdown defender is the better takeover but low-key i would go slasher takeover on this build especially if you're playing park and not pro-am because in the park on 3v3 or 2v2 slasher takeover is very hard to stop it's easier to stop in pro-am so i would put lock if you plan on playing pro-am on this build and although lock might be better i'm gonna go with slasher takeover so the difference between this player and the last player is that on this player you can get hall of fame finishing badges and the finishing is a little bit better as well. So the defense is a little bit worse, but in terms of badges, this is for sure the better build. So you're gonna wanna go contact finisher hall of fame for sure. I would go fancy footwork hall of fame personally, then giant slayer hall of fame. Then we're gonna go with slithery finisher hall of fame. And for the last badge, I'm gonna go back down punisher hall of fame so I can body smaller players. And so against taller players, I might be able to body them in the post because I do have a 95 strength. For the shooting badge, just like the last build, I'm gonna go quick draw bronze. Same with the playmaking badge, I'm going Postman Technician Bronze. And now onto the defense. You want to put Clamps on Hall of Fame, Intimidator on Hall of Fame, Interceptor, I'm putting Gold, Pick Dodger. I'm putting Gold or Silver. It honestly depends on how you play on this build because this build can run the three on 3v3s. It will be able to guard big men. It'll be a little bit short, but you do have really good defense and really good strength, so you won't get bodied as much. So I would go Pick Dodger Gold or Silver, depending on if you want to run the two or the three. If you are going to run the two on this build, I would put Pick Dodger to Gold. We're going to put Pickpocket to Gold for now. We're going to put Box to Gold so big men can't throw us out of the way when we actually get a good box out. And I'm actually going to lower Clamps to Gold and put Post Move Lockdown to Gold. And with these badges, it honestly depends on if you want to run the two or the three on 3v3s. If you're running the two, you might want to put Clamps Hall of Fame, put Post Move Lockdown down to Silver. But if you're running the three, you might even want to put Post Move Lockdown to Hall of Fame and then lower Clamps to Silver. So it honestly just depends on what position you're guarding and where you want to run in the lineup but these are the badges i would go with for this build and if you are running the three you can even take pick dodger off and put worm to gold as you can see this build has six hall of fame badges six gold badges and two bronze badges those are going to be the three builds for you guys. I think these are the best three lockdown defender builds in NBA 2K20. They're all off-ball builds, and the second two can guard every position. The first one can guard the one through the three. And with that first build I showed you guys, you could even choose pie charts with higher strength. 
if you do want to be able to guard every single position but at 6 7 even with 95 strength it still might be a little bit hard so that's why i decided to make the strength low anyway but anyway that is going to be the video thank you guys so much for watching comment down below which build you think is the best the sharp lock the pure lock or the slasher lock make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new it's been king josh and i'm out peace